The letter? Okay, so what was the letter about? Yeah, so Free Soiler, Julia Lovejoy, uh, describing the ruffians. And how are the ruffians? No, they're bad. They're bad, 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 bad. How do you know they're bad? What did they do? Uh, they started a fire. Where? Osawatomi, right? Another Native American uh, name. Um, anything else? Is that it? They just burned the town down? They, they burned more than one town. Okay. Yeah, I think she might have been referring to the sack of Lawrence earlier. Anybody die? Yes, yes. Who? John Brown was trying to mm-hmm. And what was he trying to do? Yeah, he was just trying to find a saddle and he got shot. Okay. Um, so what what's happening to the women and children? They're they are shelt they're homeless. Where have they been sent? They've been hiding in the woods. Yeah, they're hiding in the woods, fearing for their lives. What else has been happening to the people? For their prisoners. And what are they fearful of? Dying, perhaps? But there's something specific. Yeah, getting scalped. What is getting? What does being scalped look like or mean? Right, so you grab their hair and literally cut their the skin with the hair on it still. Okay. That's what she said. Okay. But what was also very interesting is that she said the Free Soilers also had prisoners. Hmm. I hope you caught that. So she definitely compares the border ruffian, ruffian prisoners to the Free Soiler prisoners. What's the difference, Caleb? Uh, she said the Free Soiler prisoners. Prisoners are treated like uh, house guests. Yeah, they get a nicely furnished room. They're sitting on the carpet, you know. Yet, huh? I think that might be a little bit of a lie. A little bit of a lie. Why would you think that? Because if you're a prisoner, you most likely won't treat them just like as guests. Maybe sounds too good to be true. Okay, all right. So why did Julia Lovejoy write this letter? To what? One, yes, but there's a bigger motive there. Yes. So who did she send this to? Did you catch that? Uh, what is she sending it to a press, like a newspaper? She sent it to a newspaper in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, Kansas. <laughs> okay. Or, sorry. New Hampshire, Kansas. So she's she's also wanting help. What kind of help? Help for what? Yeah, but what? Like, how do you help them? How do you support them? Huh? Fighting. Okay. So she does actually talk about if you can send your might, M I T E. We would say M I G H T. So send your might, your strength. Yes, please come help us. But she also asked something more for more. And if you didn't catch this, this will change the way you view the letter. Not only is she asking for strength, but she's also asking for money. Okay, not cash money because what could happen to it? It gets stolen. So what should you send instead? A check. Okay. So why does she need money? Maybe to rebuild, yes. So she says something very specific food. for food. Yeah. So if you did not catch that part, maybe to inform people why or what was happening in Kansas, way out in New Hampshire. Okay. Um, but the motive for the letter is to ask for help, specifically for money. And so that might change the way you view how she presents her story. She presents the border ruffians as bad. But how does she present the free soilers? 
good. Extremely good. So, so good that they're treating their prisoners, their own prisoners, like guests. So that, that also indicates, though, that they, too, are doing something to gain prisoners, right? Does she mention anything about um, the Potawatomi Massacre? No. Uh -uh. She does mention John Brown. Okay. Uh, maybe the gallant John Brown or his son was gallant, which means brave. So she's she's uh, presenting the truth. I mean, Osawatomi did get burned down, but she's not presenting all of the story. <laughs> because if you present the whole story, how likely are you to receive aid or support? Maybe not as likely. Okay, now that's why it's really important for you to source any document that you read. Like, where is this coming from? What is the motive? Okay. So tell me a little bit of uh, the story of the caning of Charles Sumner. What was that all about? Leah, can you tell us a little bit about it? Probably not. What? You're in the front row. Who's Charles Sumner? What happened to him? Caitlin? Um, he, got he got beat up. Why? Because wasn't it in court? It was in Congress. In Congress. They were arguing and I forgot what the other guy's name was. And he started to Okay, so um what was the argument? Someone tell me what the argument was. Mm -hmm. Lily, do you know? Remember? <clears throat> it's been the basis for everything we've talked about for the whole semester. Hmm. It was a speech. He gave a speech on what? Yeah. Um, it was about slavery where? Or potential slavery where? Where? California. Not California. Lavender? Kansas. Kansas. Right. So was he for it or against it? Yeah. He was against it. Use pretty strong language, okay? So he also um, called uh, Andrew Butler a name, um, but Preston Brooks um, was the one that beat up Charles Sumner because he was like, how dare you? That was only in the cartoon though. And Meiji drew it that way to show, you know, he didn't do, anything except for speak words. And this is how the South reacts. Okay. So Preston Brooks was defending the honor of his cousin, basically, and slavery, if you want to look at it that way. Okay. All right, so we're getting closer and closer to actual, I mean, not actual violence. We already are in the middle of the violence, right? So we get to tell, I get to tell you one more story before we talk about the Civil War that includes violence, okay? And that includes John Brown. All right, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about John Brown, and then we'll go from there. Um, this is a presentation, but um, this is really just background information on John Brown, so you don't have to take notes, but you can if you want to. So we know that John Brown, like, executed some people in Kansas and then left because he had something else planned, okay? Uh, and that was at a place called Harper's Ferry, and this is in Virginia. Virginia has come up a lot in uh, our history on slavery. Uh, Nat Turner is from Virginia, National Enquirer, or not National Park, the Richmond Enquirer. Uh, so Virginia apparently is a big, a big state. Robert E. Lee is from Virginia. If you don't know who he is, we'll talk about him in a minute. All right, so here's Mr. Brown. We already know that. Okay. So again, this was this was the section that my intern did, so he put a lot of information in there. So I'm just gonna sum up what he says. So you know he's a militant abolitionist. He wants to free all the slaves uh, by any means necessary, specifically 
through physical means. Uh, so he leaves Kansas um, and he travels north to, to get support for this plan he has. And he wants to free Southern slaves. Um, and he says, only through insurrection. What does insurrection mean? That word has been used a couple of times this year already. What does an insurrection mean? You mean like a violent uprising? Like a violent uprising, yeah. <laughs> So only through insurrection can this slave-cursed republic be restored to the principles of the Declaration of Independence. He doesn't say from the South. He says from the Republic. That includes the whole entire United States. Okay. So hes I don't think he's necessarily blaming one section. hes Everybody's involved in this. So he wanted to create a safe place for freed slaves to go to in Northern Virginia, which may have been one of the reasons why this was a failed plan because Virginia is a slave state. Okay. Um, but he uh, expanded on his plan. So what his plan was is to take over a federal armory. What is an armory? Where they hold weapons as well as the ammunition that goes with that. Sometimes they call it an arsenal. Um, what does federal mean? government. So this is a United States federal armory. So essentially what John Brown wants to do is attack the government. Okay. That's not a good, not a good thing. They want to arm themselves and then recruit nearby slaves to join the insurrection and go through the countryside of Virginia to free the slaves, which also sounds like who? Okay. Um, no, because she didn't do it with weapons necessarily. She did it in secret. It was the. It sounds like Nat Turner. Okay. Sounds like Nat Turner. So he wants to um, get the nearby slaves to join their cause, arm them, and then invade the South, freeing the slaves as they grow. So, how much support do you think he's going to get? In this stage of the issues of slavery and Kansas, maybe not a whole lot. So, yeah, we'll see. So he actually goes and talks to Frederick Douglass, and hopefully you know who Frederick Douglass is based on maybe some of your researches uh, when we did the slave life. So Frederick Douglass was an escaped slave, went to Maryland, became extremely prominent, well-educated, very vocal um, African-American, highly respected. And so John Brown went to him to ask for help. Now, why did he go to him? Why would he want Frederick Douglass? He actually also talked to Harriet Tubman about it too. And why would John Brown want the support of those two people? Maybe they knew what they were doing? They were former slaves. Okay, so they were former slaves, and if John Brown got the support of them, what? Yeah, so, sorry, say that again, Owen. It would encourage others, is that what you were saying? Yeah, so encourage others to join the cause as well. Um, Douglas was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to be involved in that. He said, basically, you're suicidal. You're about to attack the government, and the government is going to ultimately be the ones who get rid of slavery at some point. So he's basically asking for death or something. He's basically asking for it. Though some people think that was his actual intent, which would be a martyr, because you die for your cause. Okay. All right, so even with Frederick Douglass saying, yeah, that's not going to be a good idea. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I understand your motives for sure. However, I can't, I can't be a part of it. John Brown goes ahead and does his thing. So on the night of October 16th, 1859, 21 other men with Brown, including slaves and free blacks and whites, including some of John Brown's sons, go and raid uh, Harper's Ferry Arsenal. Uh, there was only one guard on duty, and um, 
They captured him. They cut the telegraph lines to prevent communication. Um, and then they sent out men to free the nearby slaves and capture hostages. So it's going great until someone rings the bell, the church bell, or the alarm. Yeah, the church bells. No, it's not only for, hey, it's time for church, but this is there's an emergency going on. So this is like at midnight. All right. So the local townspeople and militia gal get together to surround Harper's Ferry, cutting off any possible escape. So Harper's Ferry is the name of the town. I know it's a little... Sounds weird, but it's at the point of a river, and that's why it's called Harper's Ferry, by the way. So while they are um, within the firehouse, which is part of the arsenal, it's a whole complex of things, um, Brown attempts to negotiate, which would, which means what? What is Talk it? your way out. Talk your way out of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he sent men out there to negotiate, but once they you know, got out there, the militia kept on killing them. So they're like, okay, well, that's not going to work. All right. So they're trying to figure out a way to escape uh, the firehouse. And this is the firehouse. You can go visit it. And of course, I'm sure there's a state park or national park there. Maybe not national, but there it is. So um, the president at the time was James Buchanan. And he actually heard, hears of the raid and calls on a military leader uh, named Robert E. Lee. So um, he gets the U.S. Marines to come in and um, take care of the raid. So something that's really interesting here is that the Secretary of War actually had heard that there might be something happening a couple of days beforehand. And he was like, "That, yeah, that's never going to happen. So he ignored the warning. Okay. He said, a scheme of such wickedness and outrage could not be entertained by any citizen of the United States. So, um, was it two days afterwards, uh, Robert E. Lee and his Marines come in to arrest Brown, um, but Brown is going to fight. So does anybody know who Robert E. Lee was? after this. Caleb, who do you think? He's one of the generals that either fought the Union or Confederate side. Yes. Yeah. So he is a um, very distinguished general who fights for the Confederacy when the Civil War breaks out. So here we have a drawing to memorialize because they didn't have um, pictures or photographs commonly used here. So here's the firehouse that they hold themselves up in. We've got the army here. This guy. Oh, in and house, sorry. We got some people here. Injured. They're pretty calm. Against 21 people. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't go well for John Brown and his pe and his people. So they storm the engine house. Brown, Brown is knocked unconscious. One of his is it two of his uh, two of his sons are killed. Five of Brown's men escape. Ten killed. Uh, seven, including are including Brown, are captured. So he goes to a Virginia jail. He's put on trial rather quickly and is sentenced to death. Ooh. Treason, conspiracy, and murder. All right, so let's take a look at this flyer. Treason, what is treason? Warning. A warning? No. Betrayal. It's betrayal of what? of your country okay and i mean and that's you know still a thing and if you are tried and found guilty of treason the the consequences are death but it says all true christians who believe in immortality through jesus christ alone are requested to pray for captain john brown 
who is now under sentence of death and is to be hung next month for righteousness sake and doing justly with his fellow man, his country and his God by request of one who loves the truth and feels for the man that is to die a martyr to it. This is November 4th, 1859. J. Summersworth. So is this for or against John Brown? Four. This is for, <laughs> okay. So what is the justification for what Brown did? What is Mr. Summersworth saying what he did was right? He did it for God. He did it for God. Okay. He did it for God. Okay. And for righteousness sake. Okay. I think Almighty did it just trying to Matt Turner did it for God too, right? So here is the drawing of the execution of John Brown. I'm going to turn the lights off so you can see a little more detail. What is really interesting about this? What do you see in here? There's a bunch of military, okay? So up front, of course, but also back here. Why? Just in case he runs. In case he runs? Or maybe his people come after him, yeah? Or just in case, like, to protect the people if he does get out and they try to hurt people, then Okay, so for protection of the of, <laughs> of people... So we even have um, guards on horseback here. Do you notice that? Do you notice the citizens watching? Mm -hmm. Where are they at? Mm -hmm. They're um, they're behind. Yeah, they're way behind it. They're also on the roof, so they can get a really good view. Why do they want to watch this man die? Yeah. Well, this is Virginia. Is it a free state or a slave state? Slave. slave state. What did John Brown try to do? Free slaves. Okay. So they want to see the guy who tried to do that get it, right? Yeah. Or and, and die. They're trying to he's trying to take their livelihood away. But also this was like a form of entertainment, which sounds mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's horrible. And they didn't have TV. They didn't have viral videos. You know? And they wanted to be able to say, I saw John Brown die. So right before he was um, sentenced by the jury, he said, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. So, and again, the guilty land, not just the South, but the whole entire United States. And he's like, yeah, um, just by doing what I did and the result of that, um, we will never fix this problem without a fight. Was he right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was. So is he a martyr or is he a terrorist? We could say the same thing, we, and we kind of talked about Matt Turner. Is he a martyr or is, was he a terrorist? According to the Virginians, who were both of them, they were terrorists, okay? So it really depends on your perspective. So um, it's really, really interesting. So obviously the South is going to believe that um, John Brown is an abolitionist, and so, uh, or not an well, yeah, he is, but a terrorist, and then that possibly maybe other abolitionists will do the same thing, okay? The North has sanctioned and applauded theft, murder, and treason. Okay. That flyer said, yay, John Brown, okay? The North... Many in the North believed that John Brown was misguided, but he did it for a good cause. 
He said, though, uh, someone said, though, Harper's Ferry was insane because there was, like you said, it was, it was like a suicide mission, basically. I think he knew he wasn't going to get out of it. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. When, he, when you see drawings of John Brown, he looks a little deranged. Okay. So, though Harper's Ferry was insane, the controlling motive of his demonstration was sublime. What does sublime mean? Anybody know? It's like most excellent in uh, almost a divine way. That's it. So what I find really interesting, because he, along with Nat Turner, are very controversial. So how do you, you know, justify what he did? He did it for a good cause. You know, it's really, it's, it's hard to think about. And what I find very interesting is in the past year, there has been a movie released and a Showtime series that feature John Brown for some reason. Um, the first movie trailer that I'm going to show you is called Emperor. Now, it features John Brown, but it focuses on one of the um, real life characters, uh, not characters, real life person who was part of the um, raid at Harper's Ferry, and his nickname was Emperor. So you tell me what you um, think about this after you see it. I'm already dead. I've taken lashes my whole life to keep my family safe, but they will never wake my son again. You do this and you're dead. I'm already dead. You gotta go. That man who's made your plantation single handedly killed three men. I'm trying to break you down. You might as well give up now. He's smart. They say he's African royalty. They call him Emperor. So you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse. You know why they call me Emperor? Because my granddaddy was a king. In me, I trust you. I think he got a bunch of white folk. Came here ready to fight on this night. What you bring him here for? Ain't you got no manners? The more he keeps it up, you got yourselves a rebellion. I need you to be the spark that lights the fuse. Yeah, you better just fight for your life. I'll get something in trouble then. He's a brave man. It's too risky. You're going to get yourself killed. It's the only way I can free my son. Oh my God! You got to get out of here. You're not just your slave anymore. You're a symbol. You ever consider going the outlaw business? Well, I got the whole South chasing me. I'm already an outlaw. I'm right for your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, Emperor, what do you think? You said you wanted to see it. Why? Because it seems so cool and interesting. Oh, so cool and interesting. Have you ever heard of Shields Green before? I have. You have? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about him. I don't know. Really <laughs> There's not a lot of information about Shields Green, except for his participation in the Harper's uh, Ferry Raid. Um, so, can we... No, it'd be. You'd think this would be obvious, but can we actually consider this historical fact? Um, technically. technically, we can. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's based on fact. It's, it's based on fact? So all of it's fact? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 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 What do you think, Mari? Uh, I just want to ask him. Sure. I thought you said there's an old dude in there. There. An old dude. You mean John Brown? I know you said something about someone. Yeah, John Brown was in there briefly. Frederick Douglass was in there. Did you catch that? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So the guy who said you're a symbol. No, that was that was John Brown. Okay. So um, just the fact that we don't know a whole heck of a lot of about Shields Green, um, I would def definitely take this as an entertainment thing. But why would we want to? Why would someone want to make a movie about it? Okay. So there was a lot of explosions in there. I noticed. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that probably didn't happen. Just so you know. Uh, what was happening in 2020 that might uh, generate this type of movie? COVID. Uh, what does that have to do with uh, a But no, I mean, anything other than the pandemic. Racism. Yeah, sure. And not just George Floyd, but Breonna Taylor, Kobe other Bryant. things. Pardon? Kobe Bryant. Um, but that wasn't race related. Oh. That was just an accident, right? So, Aubrey Ahmed. So it's really interesting that this came out during this particular time where an oppressed person is rising up to fight for him and his family. So another interesting thing, this more focuses on, um, well, it's called The Good Lord Bird, and I couldn't figure out why, but this is actually based on a book. It is historical fiction, okay, um, and it focuses on a specific young uh, boy who John Brown rescues, who is a fictional character, um, but he's put into the story of John Brown. And it's a series, a limited series, that actually got quite a bit of recognition. Um. Stand for the Lord, the Lord will stand for you! Everybody got God on their side of the wall. Trouble is, God ain't telling nobody who he's for. My name is Captain John Brown! And I am here in the name of the great King of Kings! Whatever he believed, he believed. Didn't matter if it was true or not. The old man was nuttier than a squirrel turd. For the shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without a rival. Yeah! supposed to be historically accurate no. no i don't think so there's a obviously a, a little bit of comedy going on here is this how does how is john brown portrayed madman or martyr madman for sure okay but using god as uh his foundation for what he's doing yes sir i thought john brown was black no john brown is not no now, how come you said they whipped his kids and stuff? That was Shields Green, who was part of John Brown's raid. Okay, because he recru John Brown recruited blacks and whites to help him. Okay. But you said yes, Ruth. Why? Because it's like 
harrowing scene. But like they grabbed history, made it into a movie, but like made it an interesting movie. Like they made it to our right first year, what we want in history. Do I have the one that I would? But if I didn't have to, I wouldn't. But like then they made it like they had made it like a movie. They made the whole thing. They made it something really interesting. They made it all dramatic, and they made it for something really cool. <laughs> Okay, okay. But if you didn't know anything about John Brown, I mean, you never heard of John Brown, would this be a good movie to watch? No. 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 Not whatsoever. So what could that could potentially do to your... It would make you like, think you like a whole person. Maybe so, yeah. Or crazy, or, you know, hopefully you're going into it insane. <laughs> insane. Hopefully you've learned about John Brown before you watch it. Maybe, but do people actually go out and do that? No. Not a lot of people. Some people do. Um, but a lot of people just take things at face value. So I find it really interesting also that this series came out during the time it has. So, you know, whatever you think, you know, who knows. But um, so two, two films within the same year. Okay, so um, tomorrow what we are going to do is we're going to prep you for your assessment. So you're not going to have like a formal um, test, so to speak, for um, the impending crisis. So you will, though, have to state a claim and then prove it with evidence, whether or not John Brown was a madman or a martyr. Okay, and tomorrow I'm gonna give you some documents that you could use for that purpose. Okay, but the last thing I want to um, show you, and we can talk about the, the actual thing, um, a couple of things I wanna show you, and we have time, um, is John Brown's last speech. So these are his actual words before he is sentenced to death. Is that actually not? No, it's an actor. Um, so this is David Strahan, I think. No. I forget what it's. Here he addresses the court that would sentence him to hang. In the first place, I deny everything but what I have okay. all along admitted. The design on my part to free the slaves. Had I so interfered in behalf of the rich, powerful, the intelligent, the so-called great, or any of that class, and suffered and sacrificed what I have in this interference, it would have been all right. And every man in this courtroom would have deemed it an act worthy of reward rather than punishment. I believe that to have interfered as I have done, as I have always freely admitted I have done, was not wrong, but right. Now, if it is deemed necessary that I should forfeit my life for the furtherance of the ends of justice and mingle my blood with the blood of my children and with the blood of millions in this slave country whose rights are disregarded by wicked, cruel, and unjust enactments, I submit, so let it be done. All right, so what do you think of John Brown now? <laughs> Those are the actual words he spoke. What do you what do you think about? Does this sound like um, an insane person? Well, what is his emotion? I think he's angry for sure, but he gets choked up at one point. Well, like the um, it's about his children, yeah. But what is he willing to do? He's willing to die. 
He's like, so let it be done. Let's get on with it. Let's do it. So after his um, death and at the beginning of the Civil War, um, there were new lyrics put to an old tune that memorialized John Brown. So, and this happened a lot. Uh, the song Yankee Doodle Dandy was actually a British song. The lyrics were changed to actually make um, uh, the Yankees, the American colonists, look better. Uh, but the tune is Say Brothers, which came out of the Second Great Awakening during the religious revival of the early 1800s. Uh, and so uh, this actually might be very familiar to you, the tune, uh, because the tune was later used for something else during the Civil War. So I want you to listen to... John Brown's body lies a mooring in the grave. John Brown's body lies a mouldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a mouldering in the grave, but his soul goes marching on. We heard the tune before. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, is hallelujah. Today? Glory, it is, glory, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. But his soul goes marching on. A star above in heaven. So the tune that we know today, which also includes Glory Hallelujah, it's called the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And this is the um, Marine. U.S. Marine um, Band and Choir. Changed during the Civil War and used as a rallying song or anthem for the Union side. So I find it very interesting that the John Brown song, here are the lyrics, becomes an anthem for the North that ultimately changes to what we um, have sung today and are still singing um, today as um, a very patriotic song that so comes out of the John Brown history, which, you know, a lot of people are like, he's crazy. Um, but I just, I just find it interesting that all this is melded in together to what we know today and use today. So... John Brown, body lying, moldering in the grave. What does moldering mean? Rotting. Rotting, yeah. yeah. But his soul is marching on with the Union troops, right? I mean, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. So even though he was uh, whatever you think he is, he was his symbol, I mean, he became a symbol for um, the Civil War, or at least the Union side. I think that's all I yeah. There you go. Tomorrow we'll talk um, um, more how to set up your madman versus or martyr claim and proof.